Morning, everybody. Welcome back to the shop. This is going to be a milestone video. Today, we're going to mount the cable tracks, route some wire, and do our first jogs. All right, before we get started, I want to mention something that if it hadn't been obvious to you folks who've watched the last couple of videos, it definitely has been to me. And that is, I've gotten to the part in the project where things are a little more ad-lib. They're not pre-planned. They're not in the drawings. This video is going to be no exception. The way the cable track mounts and stuff like that, I didn't pre-engineer. I didn't really want to lock myself into it. And honestly, I didn't know what it was going to look like. So you're going to see us use the TLAR method quite a bit. Um, however, to save some time in this video, expedite it, make it more entertaining for you, we're going to treat this one a little bit like a cooking show. And I've got things pre-measured and pre-cut. We're going to do some drilling and some welding <clears throat> and uh, it'll be sorted. <laughs> Honey Bunny's new favorite cooking show. All right, enough yakking, let's get with it. So here's the cable track I selected. It measures one inch by inch and a half inside. And I figured this was going to be plenty for the cables going up to the z-axis as well as the torch itself. But it turns out that torch took a whole lot more room than expected. So what I've decided to do is put the individual switch and motor cables in the track and I'll run the torch cable outside of that. That'll also allow me to move it even further away if noise becomes an issue. These are the little clips that covered up. Right now I've got them all pulled off and set aside. At each end of the cable track are these pieces that have four holes to bolt down. I've cut a series of pieces of small plate that are going to be the right size for where it's going to get welded to the frame. But I'm going to start by using the transfer punch and drilling and tapping holes here on the bench. The track also doesn't like to lay perfectly flat by itself, but that works out because by clamping it to the bench, it also then holds it down tight to the uh, piece of metal that I'm marking. So here's the transfer punch. Just put it through the holes, give it a quick whack, and it leaves a mark in the center of the hole it went through. If you haven't seen these before or don't have a set, they're super handy for this exact purpose. Okay, we'll take a quick run over into the machine shop, stop and check the tap size index. I'm using 1032 socket head cap screws for this. So I got to grab a number 21 drill. The mount here on the gantry arm is a little bit different. It's made out of a piece of angle iron. I've already drilled the holes through it and there I marked out where they're going to go and I'll give it a quick tap here in the aluminum and then I actually drill and tap this right here on the side of the machine. Then using my trusty tapping block I power tap these using a uh, cordless drill. With the bracket mounted, I attached the cable track. I started at this end because it's the fixed end. And with it on, then I can slide the gantry back and forth and kind of get an eyeball for where the bracket's going to get welded onto the frame. Here I've got the bracket for the other end, placed where I think I want it and clamped on. I give it one last full movement from left to right or front to back as it would be with a machine and then it's time to weld it on. I'm not a big fan of welding in the wood shop but this little 110 welder does just fine so I wheel it in and tack the parts together. Next I start eyeballing the location for the x-axis uh, carriage's cable track. 
Now, although I'm not going to use the hole that I had drilled in the gantry tube, if you watched the last video, you know that well, I can't get in the ends of the gantry tube anymore. But I know that that's roughly where the track is going to fall, so that's why I'm holding it pretty much right in the same spot with my right hand. And I'm kind of getting an eyeball for where it's going to go on the x-axis. We haven't made that bracket yet, and that's coming up here in just a minute. Before I tack weld this first bracket on, I make sure to move the ground clamp. The last thing I wanted to do was to be forcing that circuit through all the ball bearings and causing mix. Because my final design didn't give me the access I had planned to run the cables through that gantry tube, I decided while I was here and welding on it, I would add an additional piece of one by one tubing to run cable through, as well as some sections of two by two tubing that I've cut just into loops. These will serve as my cable chases going across the gantry arm. This is where I'm making the mounting point for the cable chase on the x-axis trolley. I didn't get much footage of it, but basically I've taken a couple of pieces of strap that were bent to a right angle, and I'm welding them onto a piece of flat stock that I've already pre-drilled and tapped to match the four holes where the cable track will mount. Give that a quick cleanup, and we'll mount it. I had made the bracket so that the arms would fit just in between the V-groove bearings. So I make a couple marks, do some drill and tapping, which I spared you the video of, and a couple socket head cap screws, and it's mounted. With the cable track all installed, I start roughing in the wiring. I run one cable for each of the motors, including the Z, which I don't have on yet, but it'll be enough to allow us to test the system. The cable I'm using is a four conductor stranded cable that has an aluminum shield wrapping around it, which I then ground at both ends to reduce the potential for electrical noise bleeding through. I also wired up a remote machine e-stop switch, which I temporarily zip-tied in this location. I have to have it, otherwise my control podium won't enable the stepper motors. Like that antique Allen Bradley box? Thanks, Dad. The wires for it and the two proximity limit switches on the Y-axis just follow around the frame and come out at the bottom. Here's a couple of views of what the cable looks like when it's running through the track. I still don't have all the covers on the cable, but for a test that won't matter. Trust me when I say there are several more cables coming out of there now than there was when I shot this video. They really start to add up. The last step is to wire on the ends. I use a four conductor aircraft fitting and then I ground the aluminum shielding to the case of the fitting, which is then grounded through the rest of the podium and down to earth. I'm going to save you video of doing all of these. Suffice it to say it's fiddly because you wind up using really short little leads so that the rest of the fitting and the cap will cover it all up neatly. Well, there's nothing left to do but try it out. Here's where some of my original design starts paying benefits. I unplug the cables off my router, wheel the podium over to the plasma machine, plug it in, and it should be good to go. Well, I guess before we can test it, I gotta hook the drive belts back up. So I'll, I'll double time this one and get it done.
And now the moment we've all been waiting for in three, two, one. And it works. I'm using Mach 3 for my controller software. And after a little bit of fiddling and doing the math about four times, I think I got the number of steps to travel distance correct. And I started a test program running. My thanks to all of you for your patience, and I know it's taken me forever to get this video edited and uploaded. The next video on the plasma cutter will tackle the Z-axis, both the floating head, the switches, and how the torch mounts. In the meantime, take care, and I'll see you in the next video.